Yo, Sachan. How's Namba? He ran off to go see his brother. It's really cute how he wants to check on him. Yeah. I couldn't be happier for the guy. Uh, same with me. I didn't think he'd make it, to tell you the truth. It's nice to hear some good news for once. Yeah. Even if it means Nanba will probably be saying goodbye soon. Makes sense. He only came here to look for his bro. Not like he's got much reason to hang with us anymore. Yeah. I realize that. In the meantime, we need to get this guy talking. Let's get started then. <laughs> Ungag him. Don't you dare shout. Try anything funny, you'll catch hell. Try to run, you get hit. Don't answer a question, you get hit. That's how it has to be. Now, how did you fall in with the Omi Alliance? I notice when you tell them to jump, they ask how high. Why is that? Hey, remember the rules for not answering a question? Let's not resort to beating him just yet. Huh? But if we go easy on him, he's just gonna... As we speak, the Omi Alliance may well be looking for you. But it's gonna take them some time. How competent are they? Will they get here before we finish peeling off your fingernails? Ask him what he thinks about forcing us to burn down our own home. Huh. Personally, I won't be stopping at just the fingernails. <laughs> you get it? We're serious. Now tell us how you're connected to the Omi Alliance. Why are you the one holding their leash? I'm not the one holding the leash. I didn't really think you were. Who is, then? You know. Ryo Aoki. Yes. You all know him? Who doesn't know the governor? The real question is, what's his real name? Oh, don't play dumb. We've done our homework. Uh, what? Masato Arakawa. Uh, how do you know that name? A long time ago, I knew him as the young master. He knew me as Ichi. Back when the Arakawa family was still in the Tojo clan. So, Ryo Aoki really is Masato Arakawa, huh? I met him almost 20 years ago, when we were studying abroad in America. He was majoring in political economics and sharp as attack. Was he going by Ryo Aoki when you met? Yes. I didn't learn his other name until later. Was he in a wheelchair? No. But I heard he used to be. Which, actually, I don't understand. Was he, really? Yeah. Then he must have gotten treatment in the US. You can get anything there if you have enough money. Even unapproved medical procedures. So he had money? He certainly lived a lavish lifestyle. I could tell he was wealthy right away. I figured it couldn't hurt to get to know the guy better. Kiss ass. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I mean, sure, I knew he was rich, but I didn't know he was that rich. And it was shocking to learn about all his connections to the criminal underworld. I was just amazed at all the opportunities he'd grown up with. And yet... What? 
he wasn't satisfied with any of it. Not even a little bit. He wanted something completely different. And what was that? Front-facing power. Front-facing power? That was his term for it. He used to say not everyone can be controlled by Yakuza threats or bribes. People like that can only be controlled with front-facing power. Power you could see. Basically, popularity. Popularity? What, you think that's something only a teenager would want? Well, sure. Then you don't understand democracy. Under that system, it's the only path to power. As long as you're well-liked by the majority, you can get away with anything. I hate politics. His money and criminal connections he called his rear-facing power. He said without the front-facing part, his power wasn't complete. So he decided... To become governor of Tokyo. Yes. He said the governor had the most front-facing power of anyone in the country. Does he? Isn't the prime minister above him? The prime minister is just a figurehead chosen internally by the citizens' liberal party. So essentially, you only become prime minister by having a few friends on the inside. But to be governor of Tokyo? That takes real popularity. Ten million people have to like you. Every vote you get represents a tiny bit of the power you have. But what about the power of money? The prime minister controls the national budget. <laughs> but Tokyo's budget alone is 14 trillion yen. That's more than some countries. So the governor has both an incredible amount of money and the support of the public. <laughs> Who can compete with that? Ryo Aoki knew all of this. He wanted that governor's seat long before I met him. But I was happy to become a partner in his grand plan. Step one was founding Bleach Japan. <laughs> you think you're his partner, huh? You sure you're not his servant? Take it from me. The young master can really crack a whip. this dog. Nelly, probably inspired by Mexico. It is a taco place, after all. I love a good taco. Just thinking about it makes me want to stuff myself. For real? I mean, I'm sure they're good, but aren't they too rich to eat a whole bunch? I get it as, like, an appetizer or something. I, uh, think you might be confusing Mexican tacos with octopus taco.
right. I got this. My eyes on me. Yeah. Check this out. I'm not back. Well, take this. A gift for you. You're gonna get stuck. Let's go. Bring it on. Going in it now. No mercy. You're gonna be in a world of hurt. You're done. You got this. Take Watch that shot. You're gonna get Drop down. Let's go. Here we go. Thank you. Appreciate it. Cool. I'm not backing down. Come on now. You want to go? Come up. That's better. Huh? Ready? Huh? Well, take this. Let's go. Right. Mm -hmm. hey, I'm ready. Right. That's better. Yeah, come on. Check this out. Yeah. You're gonna get stuck. Let's go. Yeah. Hey, that's better. Oh, oh, I got this on me. Watch right. <laughs> I'm not backing down. Here we go. Don't huh? get caught. You're in for it now. Cool. Come on now. Take your best shot. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah, that's better. I'm up. Let's go! You ready? You're gonna get stomped! Let's go! You're fucking weak! Get a line! Take this! You're in it now! Right. I'm not that down. Yeah. Cool. You're done. I got this. Oh yeah. Well. Here we go. Here we go. Try this on your side. Let's do this together. <laughs> I'm ready thanks, now. Thanks. Hey, thanks. Cool. Come on now. Watch me. Let's go. Take this.
<laughs> Excellent. Go. Hmm. Watch me. 
take this. You're gonna be in a world. Okay, prepare yourself. Let's go. Eyes on me. Check this out. You're gonna get stuck. Here we go. I got this. You wanna go? Try this on the side. Here I go. Come on. Well. You're gonna be in the world. Don't get caught. I'm not Going in. What the man? You're in for it. You're gonna get stomped. Let's go! Take your best shot. Watch me. Yeah. 
Oh, good. It works. Wow, crazy tasty. Go. Yeah.
Magic trick. I got this. Right. Don't get caught. This out. Give it your all, everyone. I'm ready. Thank you. Hey. Yeah. Watch close now. I'm in Come on now.
Got it. Should I open it? Sweet! <laughs> ah. Hmm. <laughs> You're in it now. <laughs> 
life. at all the food here. It'd be a waste just to leave it. Read my mind there. Should I open it? Got it! Should I open it? Sweet! Ah. Huh. <laughs> 
In a world well, take your best shot. Feels like in there. Take this. It ends here. Let's go. Hmm. Let's go. Hey, cause I... hey. Cool. Check this okay. out. Cop. While you eat, I will never understand rich people. Hey, I can get behind it. Tigers are just like house cats, but bigger. Oh, sure. It's so cute when they're about to maul you. Yeah, I'm with her on this one, Adachi san. I don't want to end up as a tiger snack. I'm up! Let's go! Come on! 
Let's see. Well. Take this. Oh, Are you quick enough? Hmm. You're yeah. Come on now. Let's see. Eyes on me. Let's go. Hmm. You are yeah. Yeah. You're Let's go. go. Should I open it? Got it! Should I open it? Sweet! Mabuchi and the others are waiting for us? Well, most likely. We don't know what they're gonna throw at us, so we best be prepared. Okay. Hey, sounds like a plan. Let's gear her up, get ready, and go do this thing. Should I open it? Got it!
Listen. Okay. Yo, Mabuchi. I've been waiting for you, Kasuga. I don't think I'll be satisfied until I choke the life out of you personally. Funny, because I heard you put a bounty on my head. That means you're happy to let someone else do it. Hmm. <laughs> Where's Zhao? Somewhere in this building. For now. And what about later? Later he'll be in transit. To the afterlife. What the hell? You want a hand with this twerp, Mabuchi Han? I'm good, Ishioda-san. I'm about to make sure nobody thinks little of us ever again. I'll prove that I deserve to swear up as a full partner with the Omi Alliance. Those men next to Lama are skilled fighters. Assassins, really. You might say they're the secret weapons of the Yokohama Liumon. Damn. And up there are more Omi Alliance men. Our chances of winning a fight are very low, actually. Yeah, I get it. We're up shit creek without a paddle. But I don't care. The fact is, if we run, Zhao dies. That's all that matters. <laughs> no need to bristle, Kasuga. Uh, so you're Ichiban Kasuga. Who are you? Some fan of mine? No. I'm a man who's never forgotten how Masumi Arakawa stole my rightful seat. What? You know this scruffy-haired punk, Tendo? I only know him as the guy the captain shot. Alive and kicking somehow. <sighs> I think he might be a naughty little secret of the captain's. Kasuga, this charmer here is Tendo. Last of the lieutenants. Wait, the former boxer? No wonder he's a damn giant. You two can relax over there for a bit. I think we'll have ourselves a little sideshow. Tendo seems interested in who you are, so I'll leave you alive just long enough to talk. Later, I'll really take my sweet time toying with you. <laughs> well... Have anything to say? You're really hamming it up in here. <laughs> I think that means hurry up and kill me. Bring it on. Yeah. 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 Yeah
I'm ready now. You're in for it now. Cool. Check this out. I'm up! I'm not that down. Come on. Group well. Take this. Take your best shot. Huh? Eyes on me. You are no. Right. Try this on the side. Let's do this together. Is this ought to help. Thank you. Thank you. You're gonna be in a Let's world go. of hurt. Watch me get caught. Are you quick enough? You're in it now. Pain in the ass. Bring it. Going in. <laughs> care of the sideshow but there's still plenty of freaks to fight <sighs> maybe you hadn't heard but I'm a heavyweight boxing champ I don't think you'd even make weight for the fight I wouldn't shame the Omi by taking you on. I'll be sure to keep an eye on you, though. <laughs> been a long time since I've been able to put my fist to good use. <laughs> You're gonna regret letting us live. You can count on that. Oh, yeah? Why don't you save it for the ring? Fucking Tendo. When that guy sits down for a meal, he always saves the best tasting shit for last. I think that's fucking stupid. <laughs> 
All that does is give someone else the chance to eat it first. Feeling warmed up yet, everyone? Guys? Oh, shut up. I need to save my energy for this shit, so don't make me answer stupid questions. Hey, Hotshot. If you've got anything up your sleeve, now's the time. Yeah. That's you, right? Make some magic! No need for that. You haven't played your last card yet. In fact, here he comes now. Funny thing, I wasn't expecting to come back. Trust me on that. I thought I was done getting dragged into your messes. But for some reason, I couldn't stop worrying about you guys. Namba. So I'm here. From now on, your fight is mine too. Namba. Namba. <laughs> Come on, John. Okay. Coming here and acting all cool, you jerk. Where the heck have you been, man? Come on! <laughs> Nobody's killed you yet? What, you got nobody left to stab in the back? <laughs> Leave it to a Yakuza to hit below the belt. I know I fucked up. But I'm done with backstabbing. From now on, I'm with them. I owe you guys an apology. Let me make it up to you. Hitting the gym number. Looks like you beefed up a bit while you were away. It does? Yeah, I noticed too. Seems like whenever someone comes back to a party, they're stronger than when they left. So that's normal? Well, I did want to impress you guys if I came back, so I practiced a new move. <laughs> You're kidding! Watch me. You wanna fight? Let's go! Okay, ah. I got this! I don't miss. You're in for it now. Okay. You're in it now! You're done, you bet. Get caught. Yeah. Let's go. Hmm. Kick your ass. Uh -huh. 
Take your best shot. Bring it on. You're in it now. Let's go. Going in. Well, take this and weak. Are you quick enough? Get a lie. Take your fast shot. Right back at you. Mm. I'm up.
I'm back in my prime. I'm up. Mm -hmm. Going in. Let's go. Want some of that? Back in the game. I feel the stats going up. <laughs> nice. Moving up in the world. Excellent. Yeah. Save my ass again. How many times does that make now? Let's stop keeping track. I have to. But hey, what's your plan now? Huh? I mean, as long as you're here, you wanna help me out a little bit longer? I need all the help I can get right now, man. But what I really need are friends like you at my side. Hey, man. Huh? After everything I did to you guys, as selfish as I was, you'd still call me your friend? Yeah. Why wouldn't I? You know, you're crazy. Really? Who's the one who came back, huh? For real. I mean it. You guys have a screw loose. Come on, is it so hard to admit you like us? Shut up! <laughs> I'm sure all of us here are a little crazy. But that's the best part of being friends. Welcome back. Thank you. Shake on it, Nanchan. <laughs> uh, call that a shake? Come on. Show some love. Listen. Yes.
Yo. Kasuga-kun. Follow me. So, who's the guy you wanted me to meet? An old friend of yours. He... prefers to meet with you alone, if that's possible. I don't get it. Did he rescue you? More or less. Thing is, he's with the Omni Alliance. What's his name? I don't know. He wouldn't tell me. Guess I'll have to ask him myself. Pretty much. <sighs> it's been a while, Aniki. Mitsu. Holy shit! Mitsu! You're okay! I don't know if okay is the right word. <laughs> but I seem to be doing better than you, at least. What's going on, man? I never caught up with you after I got out of prison. Have you seen Arakawa-san recently? Nah. Us peons hardly ever see him these days. So I've heard. <sighs> Not happy about that myself. Even though we're Omi Alliance now, inside... I'm still Arakawa. Ah, uh, so you're Omi too. Yeah. I had to rescue Zhao in secret. If they find out, I'll be executed. Doesn't that mean you shouldn't be talking to me? It does. But I had to say one thing to you. I can't say much else, but you need to know. What? Arakawa-san, he's about to go all in with his next gamble. When that happens, you'll need strong allies. More than he's already got? Uh, I can't say anymore. I'm sorry. Me too. I'll be in touch. So what's going to happen to the Yokohama Liumang? Damn, going straight for the jugular, huh? Well, obviously, Mabuchi's ruined everything. The Great Wall is full of holes now. If the Omi decide to invade, it'll crumble. Is there any hope? I don't know. But if we don't patch up the wall, it's all over. And with me like this... Man, it hurts just looking at that. Hurts having it. That's why I'm thinking of stepping down. Huh? It doesn't matter so much who the boss of the Liu Mong is. In the end, the only thing that really matters is whether my men have a place to call home. You get it? Yeah. I know the Liu Mong origin story. Ah. Then you know why we formed in the first place. I don't know if I can keep us going anymore. I was never that great at it. I like my father. But who's the next leader gonna be if you step down? I have someone in mind. Someone who's tough, bold. Friend of yours, actually. What? Who? Song Hui san. Song Hui? You'd give the Lu Mong to the Komi Jewel? Yeah, I know. Up to now, the two factions have been like oil and water. But the world's changing. Walls are crumbling. If we don't start banding together, none of us will survive. <sighs> Not everyone will accept the merger, of course. I'm sure we'll lose members. But that hasn't changed the overall situation for the Eugene 3. It's join or die. Yeah. I think I see what you're saying. Do you? You figure Song Hui will keep the Liu Mong from going extinct. Meanwhile, the Komi Jewel will get a new home. So both your people and her people will be better off. Everyone's a big, happy family. 
Well, you don't have to put it like that exactly. Soft, sweetheart terms and shit. <laughs> yeah, I do. You're a good guy with a big ol' heart. I kinda figured. Do we really have to do this? I can't be that annoyed with you. The e Gene 3 do owe you a lot. I say Ryu clan's probably singing anthems about you. Uh, yeah, speaking of, I think I'll visit the chairman and see how grateful he really is. Sounds like you plan on making a big request. But I have some idea of how this fake bill ended up in your pocket. There's just something I want to ask him. I think you'll be willing to talk about more secret shit now, don't you think? He should. We all owe you big time. Uh, you sure don't hesitate to cash in on favors. <laughs> well, give my regards to him when you see him. What's with him? Crap, he saw me looking. I feel like I'm getting called over. This doesn't look good. I'd better stay out of it. You may enter. Thank you, Chairman Hoshino. Captain Takabe said it would be okay for us to talk? I heard. And I believe I already know why you've come. You've done us a great service. I would not still be leader of this clan if it weren't for you. Does that mean the Seiryu clan's gonna pull through? I can't say for sure yet. About 20 to 30 percent of our men defected to the Omi. And the ones who stayed are grumbling behind my back. And it's hard to blame them. They just found out the Jincho standoff was all a sham. Zhao told me he's giving up his position as the leader of the Liu Meng. Songhui is going to lead them. Yes, I know. <laughs> you just know everything, huh? 
Not everything. But I'll tell you what I do know. Eventually, the Seryu clan will succumb to the Omi Alliance. What? For people who had nowhere to live outside the Grey Zones, the Great Wall of Muscle was their only protection. Now it's crumbling. That's a matter of life or death for them. Already rumors are flying into Jincho's political circles. Rumors that Ogikubo's lost his touch. I'm sure Aoki got those whispers going. He never lets a good crisis go to waste. Oh, really? Aoki knows it would destroy the party if it ever revealed their chair, Ogikubo, forged money for years. Now Aoki can easily blackmail Ogikubo and force him to step down. Aoki will become the new party chair. I don't get it. Why does he want to take Ogikubo's place so bad? The party chair manages elections, so in that role, Aoki could nominate anyone he wants. He'll control the ruling party. Therefore, he'll control the nation. The whole country will be under his thumb? Yes. Especially if I'm right about his next move. I think he's gonna try to dissolve Parliament. <clears throat> Dissolve Parliament? At a time like this? That's insane! Prime Minister, I understand how you must feel, being unable to rely on Ogi Kubo-sensei. But honestly, I have the power to support you better than he ever could. If an election were held today, I could guarantee you two-thirds of the seats, minimum. Do you have a solid plan for doing that? Yes. I'll send Bleach Japan to the districts where the citizens' liberal party is weakest. Bleach Japan can influence votes anywhere. They're incredibly popular. Plus, they have my endorsement. A victory for the party would, of course, move your personal political goals forward. Oh. Tell me, do you think you have the power to maintain the party's stability right now? We don't want it breaking up for lack of support from Ogi Kubo sensei you can talk that way to the house, but not to me. Appoint me to party chair and hold an election. If you don't, I'll be forced to make public the nature of Ogi Kubo Sensei's crimes. That would mean the end of not only your administration, but the party itself. But there's no precedent for someone serving as both governor and party chair. Besides, you're much too young. If age is what you want, start digging for some old fossil who can stop me. That is, if you think you can find one. Anyone in particular come to mind? <sighs> Aoki's scheme to destroy the Great Wall worked. Now he's got Mabuchi and the Omi at his command. So much power, vested in just one man. And it had to be Masato Arakawa. Kasuga, I know you never intended to be at the center of all this. It was pure coincidence that you were there when the soap landowner died. Wouldn't you agree? Yep. Lucky me. But one thing I don't believe is a coincidence, is that you ended up in Ijin Show. Huh? What do you mean? Do you still have that fake bill? Yeah. Uh, didn't... Didn't you say you knew how it ended up on me? Yes. Only one person in the world could have put that bill in your pocket. Who? Who is it? 
Masumi Arakawa himself. Arakawa-san? No, he... He's the one who shot me. Yes, I'm aware he shot you. But did you ever consider that maybe he did that so you would end up here? What? That fake bill was his letter of introduction between you and me. It was to let me know that you were one of Masumi Arakawa's men. Uh, kind of a weird way to introduce us, don't you think? I think what it means is, Arakawa's goals do not align with those of Ryo Aoki. Well then, what are Arakawa's goals? I really can't say, but I do know that he means business. He wouldn't have used that bill if he didn't. Chairman, how exactly do you know Arakawa-san? Huh. Well, that's a long story. And there's a much better place than here to tell it. Heian Tower. Heian Tower? Yes. That's where my fate intertwined with Arakawa's. <sighs> <laughs> he sure seems to be partial to Peking Duck. <laughs> yeah. Let's have it for lunch tomorrow. My treat. I'll make the reservation. Listen. Okay. Hmm.
Huh. Go. Hey. Hey, Namba. You good? Oh, Ichiban. Perfect timing. Guess you could already tell, but yeah. I've gotta get something off my chest. You got a sec? Da -na -na -na. Today on Kasuga's Counseling Corner. What in the hell? You're on Ichiban Kasuga's Counseling Corner, man! From trivial bullshit to life's worst catastrophes, one call solves it all. <laughs> what dumbass would ever go to you for counseling? You! Why, good sir, you're the very first dumbass on the show! Wow, what an honor. Uh, okay, for real though, I'm all ears. Promise you won't tell a soul? Yeah, cross my heart. Okay, so, last night I had a hankering for a nightcap, so I dragged my ass down here. But it was late, the bartender wasn't around. And so I'm sitting here all by myself. Then I start thinking, what would be the harm in helping myself to a small pour? Just a shot, really. Figured I could pay it back later, you know? That's when I see it. An unopened legend malt. Shining in the dark like it had my name on it. What's a legend malt? A super high-end whiskey. The king of kings. One glass is at least ten grand. Get out of here! I know, right? I couldn't dream of buying a shot, much less a glass. But I figured a drop would be okay. I don't exactly sell it by the drop, dude. Well, you're right. But I took one anyway, because who was gonna stop me? I poured just a drop onto my hand. And when that sweet honey touched my tongue, I went straight to heaven. It was that good? Best whiskey I've ever had in my life. A taste that I felt through my whole body. A fruity aroma that I can still smell if I try. I'm telling you, it was pure magic. All my cares just melted away. It's really that good? They don't call it the legend for nothing, huh? Yep. Packs a legendary punch, too. Next thing I know, I'm staring down an empty bottle. Wait... Don't tell me you... drank it all? I did. Guess I blacked out or something. But the fact remains, I downed at least a hundred grand worth of whiskey. What'd the bartender say? You think I actually told him? What's he gonna do, hand me a bill that'll never get paid? What I did instead, was I found the nearest mini-mart, grabbed the cheapest whiskey I could find, and replaced it. Wait, so... The whiskey in the Legend Malt bottle right now is... Horse piss. To the brim. Dude, someone's gonna find out eventually, you know? I know. Why do you think I'm so stressed out? 
So come on, Cusco, what would you do if you were me? Uh, if it were me, I'd... Well, it's not like you can return it. What's done is done, you know? And if I get caught, I just pull something out of my ass. <laughs> it must be nice to have that kind of confidence. I could see that working for you. Yeah, man. No point crying over spilled whiskey. Either way, I can't just ignore what I did. I'm practically a thief now. Yeah, but if you're gonna steal, at least you made it legendary, right? I say, you gotta stay cool, see what happens. Huh. Yeah, maybe you're right. Well, if it isn't my two favorite vagabonds, why are you two not drinking? Uh, we were just figuring out some life stuff. Without me? <laughs> at least you saved me a seat. Uh, of course we did. Shall we? I'm in the mood for something special today, and I know this place has some killer whiskey. Uh, you want whiskey? Yeah. There a problem? Not exactly a problem. Good. I was thinking we could do something fancy for once. You don't mean... Bartender, I'll take a 12-year-old silver malt on the rocks. You sure? It's 1,500 yen a glass. <laughs> What? A girl can't reward herself every now and again? Oh, thank God. We're gonna shit our pants every time someone orders a whiskey now, aren't we? No doubt about that. Chief. Hmm? My friend's got some questions about the day I was dumped in this town. Yeah. I want to know why you didn't just abandon Ichiban or dump him at a hospital. If you don't mind telling us, I'm sure we'd all appreciate it. Hmm, I see. I'll tell you, it's as good a time as any. Uh, uh, what? There's an old tradition in this homeless camp. A responsibility passed down through the chiefs for many years. What responsibility? On occasion, when we're asked, we dispose of bodies. What? Bodies? Yeah. There's a Yakuza family from Kamurocho who pays us to do it. They're called Arakawa. Arakawa? Seriously? They... Uh, was this going on while they were still Tojo? I don't know every detail, but yes. The arrangement existed at that time. It existed before I started living here. We've dealt with all kinds of bodies. Whether they've been shot, stabbed, beaten. No matter how nasty, we dug holes and buried them under garbage. Who knows how many are there now? Back during the bubble, we got one every month. Or so I was told. Since I became chief, there's only been three. Damn. Arakawa the assassin. But there's one more secret rule. It applies to anyone the Arakawa bring here alive. A secret within the secret. Great. What happens if they bring someone alive? We're supposed to give the person medical aid, then let them go free, while pretending they're dead. Uh, what's up with that? In the criminal underworld, there's always people wanting to fake their own death. Gamblers, guys on the run, anyone who's afraid someone will hurt them. They send people like that here. We honor the secret agreement. I think it might actually be a service the Arakawa family provides, but obviously they don't advertise it. So it ended up being a very rare event. Is that agreement why you saved me? This live body rule? <sighs> you got it. What sort of guy dropped me off here? I mean, probably just someone from the family. I had no reason to check or anything. 
The guy lugged you out of the trunk of a car. You were covered in blood. He paid me and left. Didn't say a single thing the whole time. I'm sorry, Ichi. You have to die. I'm counting on you, Ichi. Huh? What the...? Hmm? After Arakawa-san shot me, I think he said something. I think it was... I'm counting on you, Ichi. What would that even mean? No clue. But the more I think about it, the more I'm sure he said that. Look, Ichiban. What? Now, I don't want to dash your hopes or anything. When you were dumped here, you were on death's doorstep. You were only alive because everything I did went exactly the way we needed it to. But it could have easily gone a different way. I know you want to trust Arakawa, but... I think Arakawa-san had to shoot me. All the other Yakuza at that meeting were watching him. Huh? Never mind. You don't get it. Forget I said anything. I went ahead and got started. You sure you don't mind treating me? What? Are you actually able to pay? Wish I could, but I don't think they take this. You don't sound like you're gonna relax during this meal. Depends on what you say. Hopefully I'll relax enough to enjoy the duck. So, uh, how do you know Arakawa-san? I'm on the edge of my seat here. It wasn't long after the war the counterfeit bills started being produced in Ijincho. It was top secret. Only the heads of the Seiryu clan and the Liumang, plus some officers, knew about it. 
Outside of that inner circle, they also had to hire people to smuggle the bills. Smugglers? And one of them was a traveling actor. His name was Toshio Arakawa. He was Masumi Arakawa's father. What? One day, he came to us saying he lost an entire suitcase filled with a hundred mil in fake yen. No excuse in the world could have saved him. A mistake that grave required the Seiryu clan to make an example out of him for the other smugglers. <laughs> but remember, only a few people at the top even knew about the counterfeiting. It wasn't a task they could hand to just anybody. So I, being next in line to inherit the clan, was entrusted to carry it out. So did you... you actually... Yes. I killed Toshio Arakawa, father of Masumi Arakawa, in this very place. Forty years ago. But I had no idea who was in the room with my target. By the time I learned it was his fourteen-year-old son. It was too late. I had to go through with the hit, knowing this boy would see his father die. To make my guilt even worse, later I found out why Toshio lost the fake bills. His wife and her lover had stolen them. When those two fell into the ocean and disappeared. Their corpses were never even found. So Arakawa-san lost both his parents, one after the other. And his only other friends, the theater troupe, disbanded soon after without their leader. Masumi Arakawa became a drifter, along with a few other actors. They couldn't trust anyone, so what other path was there for them, except becoming Yakuza in Kamurocho? Arakawa joined a low-ranking family in the Tojo clan called the Hikawa family. Life wasn't easy for him there. They were the kind of family that took hits without thinking twice. Really? Yes. So they were always in need of ways to dispose of a body. Masumi Arakawa was tapped to help with that, and he was extremely cautious. To do it, he started coming all the way to the homeless camp in Ijincho. Really? Even though the family was based in Tokyo? Why? Well, truthfully, he wanted an excuse to come to Yokohama. Because it would afford him opportunities to hunt his father's killer. I see. So Arakawa-san was using the homeless camp to dispose of bodies all the way back then. Indeed. As for his hunt, he researched Yakuza and criminals every time he was here. All he started with was a single clue. His own childhood memory of the suspicious waiter he saw here that night. Eventually, seven years after the murder, I received an invitation to come here. He signed his invitation Masumi Arakawa. It was a bold declaration, and I knew immediately the running would be futile. So I came here, alone. I didn't even bring a bodyguard. Why the hell not? Well, to put it simply, I was prepared to die. But, I mean... In this line of work, there are no good ways to die. And I can think of worse ways to go that would not give that boy the justice he'd earned. The memory of what I'd done to him never left me, you know. It was always like a small bone stuck in my throat. He was sitting right where you are now. Here? Yes. 
He didn't look a day over 20. But his eyes had that hard, flinty gaze of an old killer. I couldn't help myself. I told him everything. I told him why I killed Toshio Arakawa. I even told him about the secret counterfeiting. I figured I was dead anyway. He had a gun in his hand, and all he had to do was pull the trigger. But he never once interrupted me. When I'd finished, he slowly stood up. I stopped him as he turned to leave. Didn't you come here for revenge? I asked. And? What did he say? He said, if only you had ignored my invitation, then I could have shot you in the back. Then, he left. Uh, boss. In 1984, the 10,000 yen bill changed from the face of Prince Shotoku to Yukichi Fukuzawa. By that time, Arakawa had found his own Yakuza family. So I sent him a gift. What was it? A fresh batch of crisp, fake bills featuring Yukichi Fukuzawa. They were defective prints with nothing on the back. <laughs> Not exactly legal tender. Then, how was that a gift? It's hard to explain. If I had to say, I was out of gratitude. Sure, but for what? I should have died that day I met with Arakawa. I would have been right. And yet he spared me. Not only that, but he lifted a terrible weight from my chest. Furthermore, it's not an exaggeration to say the equilibrium among the Ejin Three continues to this day because of him. Wow. I owe him an unfathomable debt. And one day, I... I must pay it back. The defective bills were how I chose to communicate the sentiment. Counterfeiting secret is Ijincho's weakness. And it was only thanks to Arakawa that the Ijin Three could continue to secretly wield that power. But of course, that means if he ever feels like it was a mistake to let me live, he can use the fake bills to unravel everything I've built. The gift wasn't the bills themselves, they were leverage. I actually wrote something on the back to that effect. Neither justice nor mercy should tip the scale. It means that those in power must reward and punish where necessary. I felt it was an appropriate message. I suppose the writing has faded at this point. Whoa. So that's the whole story. Up till this moment. But now I'm sitting across from a man holding one of those fake pills. Which, of course, is a message from Arakawa that only I could understand. The message is, Masumi Arakawa sees you as a beloved family member. Arakawa-san thinks of me as family. You would not have placed that bill in your pocket lightly. Do you see its significance now? After everything I've told you. <clears throat> there is almost no doubt in my mind that Arakawa did not want you killed. So he didn't shoot you out of malice. He shot you so that you would be brought here, be saved by the homeless, and eventually meet up with me. Do you see? <clears throat> That's everything I can tell you. That's plenty. Thank you, Chairman. I see it all now. I always kind of figured... You did? Well, it's your move now. 
I've only told you what I know, so... It's okay. That's enough. I trust you. <laughs> well, I don't hear that often. Yeah, neither do I. Not even from my friends. But those friends are trustworthy to me. And so are you. I believe everything you said. And... My faith in Arakawa-san is coming back strong. Kasuga. Yeah? Are you... a blood relative of Arakawa's? <laughs> no. It's not like that. I see. Well... He must have been happy to have such loyalty as yours. As proud as any father, I think. <laughs>